was our homage to the prequels and the quality of that. I have the higher ground. I've got Annie. the higher ground, Anakin. You've lost. Mm. Yeah, hello, welcome to In the Court of the Wedding King in Star Wars Week. That's what it is. Yep, we're doing our third Moody Blues album. Um, it's been a bit of a kind of run, really, hasn't it? It's, it's yeah. <laughs> we didn't have much to say about any of them, really. I think we chose the wrong albums. Actually, and had I known the albums, I think we would have done the ones through the... You know, we, would, we definitely would have done Days of Future Past, but we would have done two different ones, I think. Yeah, maybe we can come back to them in the in the future. Yeah. We're going to run out of albums at some point. One day. One day. This one's better. I think this one's much better. And really, in retrospect, the last album should have been three eggs. I'll give it four eggs. It should have been a three, really. And Days of Future Past was also three for me because of not even what sat in, so it did balance out, but this one is a better one. Floydian is the thing I thought about. It starts to sound like Pink Floyd. I'm assuming because Pink Floyd were listening to this and didn't know what to do. <laughs> so they thought, well, let's do that then, I suspect. It's, it's the band era Pink Floyd, it sounds like, so the, the dodgy era, you know, post-Piper before Dark Side, when they were actually a band and they were all writing stuff. The Well, particularly the last three tracks. The last three tracks are cool. It's not really three tracks, it's one thing with three bits that reprises at the end, because it's not really long enough to be three tracks really. Supposedly inspired by also Sprack Zarathustra, or however you pronounce it. The Spank of Zarathustra. That, yeah. I don't know why, it doesn't say anything like it at all to me, so... But it's pretty cool. Um, and the... You know, so... It, it, and the rest of the album is good, it kind of sags in the middle a bit. Um, again, there's a lot of songs. But it is one of those things when the album finishes, you realise not much has happened. But you think, well, that last bit was good. Although there's not a lot been going on. It's one of those things. A bit like Pink Floyd, you know. Um, but you've got a bit more variation in the songs. The problem with the previous album was it was all much the same stuff. That obviously they'd gone to California and they had a lot of drugs and uh, made some songs and recorded the songs as quickly as they could. Um, I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that the first two albums are the first... You know, this, this is the difficult second album in that they, they, they already had all those songs written pretty much, and they, they just sort of put them on albums, and I think, in retrospect, I think that the thing about the second album was that it was probably made under a lot of pressure, and very quickly, whilst on drugs, so they just recorded lots of songs, let's put harmonies on there, man, whereas uh, it was quite successful, so now they had, not only did they have to write a load, a load of new stuff, but they had time to do it, they were given time to do it, because they were already getting very, very successful, and I think that re re is, is reflected. The stupid sixth form stuff is still there, but with a twist... In the beginning, at the start, is the talking stuff, the poetry. But then a robot starts talking, and it tick, 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 noises, and it's quite funny. Mm. So I quite like that. <laughs> it's quite, quite entertaining, it makes me think of... Um, certainly, would 50 Gallons do? Um, what's his name? From Forbidden Planet, and... Uh, Not Robbie the Robot type Robbie the Robot, yeah. That's quite entertaining. It made me think of uh, ELP, actually, with... No computer stands in my way, that kind of thing. That's quite cool. There's another spoken bit before the, the, the final three tracks called The Dream, uh, which is just nonsense. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the title is enough to make the shoulder sag, isn't it? And the fresh on the tree. <laughs> the thing is, I mean, it's, it sounds incredibly sick for me. Yeah. At the same time, it's almost a Dream Theatre title. <laughs> yeah, could be. It, you know. Yeah. Actually, I mean, we listen to a lot of albums that, you know, really you need to sit and concentrate, you know, mm. what the bloody hell's going on here, or listen to multiple times. Uh, and this isn't like that at all, really. It's actually quite a nice little yeah. ditty. Yeah, no, I mean, not like the second album, it's just, it's just, it's a lot more varied. There's a lot yeah. more diversity in the songs. And, and the... I mean, a lot of the songs are very Beatles-esque length. Yeah. It's that sort of period, and it's very, I mean, it just... It, it is very 60s, just evokes mm -hmm. 60s when you listen to it. Yeah. And I, I kind of wish it was a summer, I kind of wish we were reviewing this album in the summer because mm -hmm. it's a summer album when you stick in the, in the yeah. car, you know, yeah. nice sunny morning on the way to work, you listen to this, it would be, it'd be a really nice experience. But yeah, you're right, I mean, in terms of what you take away with it from it after it's finished, it's, it's not a great deal, apart from uh, a, a relatively enjoyable time yeah. listening to it. Yes. And that's our review. <laughs> that is our review. I mean, there's not much more you, you can say about it, really. I mean, I have actually, I know you say this is, um, you've chosen the wrong three albums, but I've, I've actually enjoyed listening to these albums because they don't require any sort of 
any input from your side. Yeah, you just is, put it on. You just put it on and, and sort and of then panic there. what we're going to put in the review or not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I haven't listened to the bonus tracks. I actually made an effort to listen to the original version this week. Oh, yeah, I listened to the bonus tracks on this one. I didn't bother with the previous one. It was, I didn't know when I just about got through it. So, you know. uh -huh. Was it worth it? It wasn't worth listening to the bonus tracks. No, I enjoyed listening to them. Though. I'll tell you what we haven't done in ages, Kev. We haven't done an album cover review. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's true. Let, what a time. Let, let's have a look at the album cover, yeah? I mean, sorry, Kev, I'm reading your album. I won't worry about that. It's not going to come out again. Okay, so there it is. Yeah, yeah there's a yeah. rose on the back. So it's, it, it is a, it's the gatefold thing, isn't it? So that's uh, the picture. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> kind of cool. The robot with a rose and a um, tree. I thought that was like the snout of a, a hedgehog or something. That's that's very much of its time, or like you know Genesis and all that kind of stuff. And there's all little things on there that you can see. And yeah. Would have worked better as a bigger picture. Definitely. But and 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 just like all those things, as as a work of art, I mean, you wouldn't stick it on your wall, would you? Not that, that's silly. Yes. Right then, should we give some eggs? Yes, it's four eggs. Yeah, I agree. And I think the previous album should have been three. I'm going to stick with whatever I said, because I was very committed to that. We've had a few comments about wearing Christmas jumpers and stuff like that, Kev. Yeah, but it's not Christmas yet. <laughs> Even now, it's still not Christmas. No, no. It's not Christmas till next. I think we ought to have a little think about doing something uh, special for our Christmas episode. We should. Yeah. We should. So we might, um, we'll get our thinking hats on, and we'll have something for you next week. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Anything else to say about threshold of a dream? Not really. I, th I think there's something more established there, in, in that it's it, more moody blues. I think, and Justin Hayward's voice is, is there, the, the familiar sound of his voice that's on heartbeat is there. Mm, yeah. yeah, maybe. I mean, it's obviously we're looking at a very short period. There's the whole 70s to come yet. I mean, we're yeah. still in the 60s yeah, here. Yeah, you've got half of the 70s worth of albums. Yeah. So, I mean, I should imagine that the 70s will, you know, do something quite definitive to their sound. Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting to do that in the future. I mean, at the moment, my impression of the Moody's Blues are, Moody Blues are a 60s. Yeah, 60s, sort of folky pop yeah. stuff. Mm. That's it, really. Sorry. So, yeah, that was the Moody Blues. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. And, right, so... Catch us next week for a special. We're going to do a special uh, next week, I think, of some kind. We don't know yet until we do a new band in the new year. See you soon!